Hi, I'm Kirk Weiler, and today we're going to look at um, a tape diagram problem from the Algebra 1 Common Core. Uh, I have to admit, I am not used to using tape diagrams. In fact, what motivated this was I was sitting down with uh, doing a little bit of tutoring today with Lily Roof, and um, we were taking a look at a tape diagram problem that was somewhat similar to this one. It's pretty much the same problem, I just couldn't remember the exact names. And uh, I realized I didn't really know how to use them. I've seen them used before, and they're, they're kind of cool. Um, so we're going to take a look at a tape diagram problem that could come right out of, let's say, an Algebra 1 Common Core approach. And we're going to see how to solve it by, by using the tape diagram, but by also um, solving it algebraically. So let's take a look. Now, the idea behind a tape diagram is that we're supposed to be able to represent um, unknown quantities and known quantities sort of with a piece of tape or a tape measure or something like that. So let's take a look. Classic algebra problem. Jack is 27 years older than Sarah, his daughter. In five years, Jack will be four times as old as Sarah. How old is Sarah now? All right. Well, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of think about... We're going to close this box up. And we're going to kind of think about Sarah's age as being represented by a piece of tape. And since Sarah is sort of the most important person in this problem, I'm going to let sort of the length of that tape be equivalent to her age. Right? So we're going to say that her age is X. All right. Now we know that Jack, her father, has an age that is the same size as X, but then is 27 more years. So that, that, that adds on quite a bit. Now, one of the things that I find a little bit problematic about tape diagrams is that I have a hard time knowing sort of the relative size of this quantity versus this quantity, because I, I don't know what X is. I might have a feeling for it, because Sarah's his daughter. I'm thinking that X is probably smaller than 27 certainly hope that it is. But then again, I mean, Jack could be quite old, and Sarah could be quite old as well. Jack isn't 27. He's 27 more than, than Sarah. So remember, we're, we're really kind of thinking about lengths, right? This length is Sarah's age, and Jack is 27 years greater. So that's now, right? But what about five years from now? Five years later. All right, well, five years later, pretty simple, right? What's the deal with Sarah? Well, she's got the X, but then she's got an additional five. Okay. Now, again, I don't really know the relative size of the X and the five. Maybe, maybe the X is actually bigger than the five. What's Jack? Well, Jack's pretty easy, right? Jack is the X. the 27 more than the x, and then, of course, another 5. So here's Sarah's age. Here's Jack's age, five years from now. Now, what we could certainly do is we could make Jack's age a little bit easier. Remember, it's all the same size. Whoops, I got a little bit fat there. We could say this is x, and then we could say that this is 32. Because remember, we're adding these. We're not multiplying them in any way. Now, what do we know? We know that five years later, Jack will be four times as old as Sarah. That's the really the important, most important part of this problem. So Jack's age, this, right, this guy right here, should be four times, four times this quantity. Let's actually kind of draw what that looks like. Whoops, scrolled down a little bit too far, a little bit too fast. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually kind of draw a picture of what that looks like. It means that if I took Sarah's age, remember, which is x and then a 5, x plus 5, and I reproduce that four times. This, this picture is going to look probably really bad, and I apologize for that. But I'm, I'm literally like, oh, hey, it's four times as much, right? So I've got... Right, there's four of these things. 
x plus 5, x plus 5, x plus 5, x plus 5. That has got to be the same as jack, which remember is x and 32. Now, all of this is addition. So I'm going to do something crazy right now. I'm going to take this and I'm going to subtract it. I'm, going to, I'm not going to subtract it. I'm sorry. I'm going to erase it. And I'm going to replace it. I'm just going to rearrange all that addition. And instead of having what I had before, I'm going to have, I'm going to take, there were four X's, right? I'm going to put those four X's up front. X, 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 X. And of course, I had four fives as well. I'm going to lump those all on as a 20. Yes? So now compare these things. Ultimately, don't, don't lose sight of what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out the value of x, Sarah's age. Well, let's do some things. One thing that we could do is we could kind of compare these two, and if you will, we could just sort of lop off 20. You just say, well, we don't really need to think about that. What would that leave us, right? That would leave us the following picture. It would leave us with these four x's. right and this 1x and an additional 12 right because if I've got a total of 32 and 20 was over here and 12 was over here well look these X's are kind of if you will taken care of that means these 12 have to divide up evenly between these three X's and therefore X must be 4 Sarah must be 4 years old by the way, that's kind of neat because we could check it then with the condition up here, which is four years later, Jack should be, um, should be uh, what, four times as old as Sarah? So four years later, what is Sarah? Um, or sorry, five years later, I'm sorry. Sarah would be nine years old. Jack, right, was 31 to begin with. He was four plus 27. He was 31. And five years later, he'd be 36, right? Five years later, he'd be 36. And therefore, he would be, think about your multiplication facts, four times greater than Sarah's age. Isn't that cool? The way that tape diagram works out? Now, let's take a look at the straight-up algebraic approach. This is the way that I probably would have taught it. Um, you know, and I think it's really debatable, the best route to go, but here's, here's how we would classically do it. We'd kind of do a now and five years from now. We'll just call it five years later. Same approach, right? So now what I would do is I'd, I'd do what's known as a let statement. I'd say let x be equal to Sarah's age. Now a lot of people put another let statement. I claim this there isn't a let, there's then. Then x plus 27 must be equal to Jack's age. Again, if x is going to be Sarah's age, then x plus 27 has to be Jack's age. But that, that's now. Five years from now, x plus 5 is going to be Sarah's age. And x plus 27 plus 5, well, that's going to be Jack's age. Now, the way addition works, though, is that it is a commutative and associative, which means that we can do that addition first. So x plus 32 is Jack's age. Now we set up an equation. We know that Jack's age, which is x plus 32, must be four times, be careful with your parentheses use, Sarah's age. Now, at this point, we've taken that word problem and we've completely translated it into an algebraic equation. The expectation from the Common Core is that students who have gone through the 8th grade Common Core curriculum are proficient at solving equations that are what are known as linear. In other words, they're equations where x is raised to the first power, at most. So the rest of this equation is something that you should be able to solve at this point. But I'm going to walk you through it. There's nothing that we do to the left-hand side. We would distribute the 4 through the right-hand side using the distributive property of multiplication. 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 5 is 20. 
Generally speaking, if we have variables on both sides, we're going to move them to one side by adding or subtracting. Remember, 4x minus x gives us 3x plus 20 equals 32. We're going to subtract a 20 from both sides. I'm going to continue my algebra up over here. That's going to give me 12 is equal to 3x. And of course, I can undo multiplication by 3 by dividing both sides by 3. And I find out that x is in fact 4. So here we have a traditional algebraic approach using let statements and an essential piece of the information, i.e. that 5 years in the future, Jack's age is 4 times Sarah's age. And we have a more visual approach where we represent Sarah's age in terms of this length x. Jack's age is in the length x plus the length 27. And then we think about what it would mean to reproduce. What's kind of cool here, and let me switch to, whoops, let me switch to a different color. Did I get a different color? I did. Is that really this step right here, right, where we take Sarah's age and we reproduce it four times, right, really gives us the equivalent of that 4x plus 20. That really is that distributive property that we have down in the second approach, right, the 4x plus 20, which is right here. What's also kind of cool, step by step, the tape diagram approach kind of mirrors the algebraic approach, right, right here. Right here, we have 4x plus 20 equals x plus 32. When I crossed out that 20 from both of those things, that was the equivalent of subtracting 20 from both sides. When I then, and, and then leaving us this picture, which was 4x equals x plus 12. That was this picture right here. And then I said, hey, why not just ignore Sorry, why not just ignore these two x's? That left us with 3x equal to 12. And then we divided both sides by 3, and that gave us x equals 4. So the algebraic approach actually is directly analogous to the tape diagram approach. But of course, it's more symbolic, whereas the tape diagram is more visual. All right. I hope that helps, either if you're a student with the idea of a tape diagram or if you're a teacher like me with the idea of a tape diagram. I was, I was a little bit clueless until I thought about them some. Um, so that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. And remember, as always, don't get into a staring contest with a llama. They spit. Take care for now. Bye-bye.